Welcome back to Six Story Time. Uh, today we are covering the I-70 Killer, um, and this takes over three states, and it's over 29 days of killing. Um, so it's going to be a bit, but the story was just actually updated on October 18th of 2021. So the information that's being presented in this video today is up to date as of October 18th, 2021. So. With that out of the way, I will have uh, pictures of what the killer could look like to look like today. I'll have some pictures of victims as well. Of course, if you know any of this information, please know anything about this and it's helpful information. Please make sure to contact the number at the end of the video with any helpful and legitimate leads. Now, with that out of the way, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with all of the stories. And of course, throughout the week, I do upload shorts as well. So, with that gone and said, let's get into today's story about the I-70 kit. The three-state 29-day killing, 29 killing streak started in Indiana. On April 8, 1992, Robin Folder was shot to death inside of a Payless shoe store in Indianapolis. Three days later, on April 11, 1992, two women were found shot to death inside of a bridal store in Wichita, Kansas. Victims Patricia Smith and Patricia Majors stayed late to wait for a customer needing a cummerbund. Neither made it home that night. Detective Tim Ralph was one of the Wichita Police Departments that worked on the case 28 years ago and it's there where authorities caught a break, an eyewitness account. Detective Ralph said the customer the women were waiting late for arrived at the store and saw the man. From that encounter, a composite sketch was created. Investigators believe the key to solving the case lied with a suspected murder weapon. The police believe the killer used an Irma Work Model ET-22 pistol, a distinct gun, with a nearly foot long bar barrel. Sorry if I'm butchering that. I know it's going to happen. It's actually a historical remake of an old German Navy pistol, said Detective Ralph. The barrel is long enough where the gun has a wooden forearm. Just two weeks after the double murder in Wichita, the killer struck again. On April 27th at Sylvia's Ceramics in Terre Haute, Indiana, the killer claimed his only male victim, Michael McCrown. Police believe the killer mistook McCrown for a woman because McCrown had long hair, and the, and the killer saw him from behind. A week later, Nancy Kitzmiller was killed in St. Charles. Four days after that, on May 7, 1992, Sarah Blessing was shot to death inside of a small store in Raytown, just outside of Kansas City. As the 90s faded into the new century, the story fell out of headlines, but the families that were impacted will never be forgotten. Nancy Kitzmiller's parents have done interviews over the years hoping to keep the case in the public eye. In 2016, Carol Kitzmiller told News 4 every single day you think about her. Her husband, Don, hopes, con hopes continuing coverage of the story will lead to someone coming forward with the clue. There is no reason not to say anything, he said in 2016. It benefits society and it benefits us. Despite decades of frustration, Step has not given up hope. We're not going to give up on this case. We have individuals working on this case in several states and cities. He said, we believe this case is solvable. The FBI has examined the evidence and their profiles believe, given the geography and the timing, they know where the killer lived in 1992. The FBI has joined an initiative along the ATF and investigators from all the cities where the murders happened. That This case has been looked at two separate times by FBI profilers. Both times they believe the, believe the killer is from the Indianapolis area, said Steep. There's nothing out there saying he's not alive. I believe he's still alive and out there, said Steep. His crimes stretch across the Midwest. Now the I-70 killer is back underneath the microscope as police review and release new information on the cold case. 
Inside the St. Charles Police Department, there is a room full of thousands of files related to the man known as the I-70-35 killer. And next month, November 2021, the department will meet with every agency involved in this case, along with the FBI and ATF. The investigators and forensic experts will go through thousands of files in hopes of finding a clue that can crack this case. Ahead of the meeting, police released a new age-enhanced sketch of the suspect. The police believe the killer is now between the age of 52 and 70 years old. They also believe he could be at about 5'7 to 5'10 and is believed to be thin. At the time of the murders, the police suspect him to have dull red hair. St. Charles Police Detective Donald Steep says there are 10 drawers that contain thousands of names and all possible connections in the in to the 1992 crime spree that left six people dead across three states. The I-70-35 killer got his name because several of his victims worked in stores just off the Interstate 70. One of those killer victims, one of those victims was the 24-year-old Nancy Kitzmiller who was killed in the store in St. Charles. On Sunday, May 3, 1992, Kitzmiller was working alone at the Boot Village just off the Interstate 70 at Zabil Road. According to Steep, the Kitzmiller, Kitzmiller wasn't supposed to even be at work that day. She was filling in for another employee. At approximately 2.30 in the afternoon, she was discovered shot to death in the back of the store. There's no surveillance video, no witnesses, and no known motives. Year later, years later, the cold case investigators would simply guess the killer's motive it has always simply be the thrill of just killing. But Kitzmiller, of course, is not the I-70's first victim. However, she was his last victim. There you have it. So, some of the information released, again, like I said, October 18th. 2021 um so this is the information the police have and has released and of course if you have any information concerning this or you may be an eyewitness or you may be able to pick up on who the suspected uh killer is based upon the uh, evidence and photos um make sure to contact the crime stoppers uh i'll try up there and at the end of the video make sure to pause because there will be a black screen with information but with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and tune in to next week's video. Who knows what will be covered. Until then, everyone, take care, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you then.